This week on the Storycraft Society, we're gonna be going over how to paint four common textures that you're gonna encounter when making Dungeons and Dragons or wargaming terrain, and we're gonna be doing it the easy way. Let's go. Back to the channel everybody my name is Garmin and this of course is the Storycraft Society where we craft terrain into our stories and this week's video is going to be about painting four commonly found textures that are going to be showing up honestly a lot while you're painting Dungeons and Dragons or wargaming terrain. I'm going to time stamp all of the different textures in the description below so if you want to fast forward to a specific type you can do that but the four textures are going to be stone, plaster, wood, and brick. Now the hook of this video is going to be that I am specifically painting these the easiest way that I know how so that they still look good on the table. I'm not gonna be cutting any major corners, but I'm going to be doing it in the way that I think still looks nice, but doesn't take insane amounts of time. A little bit of backstory on this beauty here. In the beginning of the year, right when everything kind of started to shut down, I gave myself a challenge. This was before the YouTube channel, any of that. I'm just gonna keep making buildings until I don't wanna do it anymore. And I ended up making what I dubbed the Village of Quarantinia. See what I did there? This is the last building from that series of buildings that I made that is not painted. And I figured that would be a good opportunity to use it in a video to kind of kick my butt into gear to get it painted. So let's talk about what this video is and what this video isn't. What this video is not is going to be something that is a masterclass on painting that for all of you painting pros out there to learn specific nitty gritty techniques. Not what this is. I'm gonna be painting through this thing as quickly as I can to make it look good, and that will probably be irritating for anybody who paints well. What this video is, though, is going to be a resource for those out there like me who don't enjoy the painting process, so when they get to this stage, they can just quickly knock out a paint job that looks pretty good and get their terrain onto their table. What that means is, is that if you have any painting tips or advice for those of us who want to get done fast and quick but have it look good, leave that in the the description below, that would go a long way. And I'm sure that anybody who is in my situation, which includes me, would love to hear of any tricks and tips to speed up their painting process to get through all of this faster. So without any further ado, let's jump into our first texture. We're gonna start painting some wood. The fact that this video is gonna be beginner friendly is kind of a bonus. So I'm just gonna go over some beginner friendly tips just here at the beginning. So there are two types of brushes that I use when I'm painting terrain. They are dry brushing brushes and wet brushing brushes. They come in all different sizes and shapes and really it's pretty simple for somebody who is as unskilled at painting as I am. I'll tell you the difference. This is what I use for wet painting and this is what I use for dry brushing. That's it. Now certainly I'm gonna go into why I would choose a certain brush on a specific task later, but brushes are that simple for me. I'm sure there's a more technical way to talk about them, but for me, this is, uh, you know, all that it is. Now that we're on to paint selection, when I'm painting wood, there is all kinds of different colors that you can use. A lot of times I'll even use grays and that sort of thing to get my wood color put together. But in this particular example, I'm just gonna be using these three colors. Now these three are brown, by Craftsmart, Milk Chocolate by Americana, and Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel. Now these three colors honestly could be interchanged with a lot of different browns, but this is gonna be a reoccurring theme when I'm trying to paint fast and easy. Three tones seems to be the number that gets me the best looking results with the least amount of effort, and that is going to, of course, go over top of a black base coat. So when I go to start painting wood, I'm typically going to be painting some kind of plank. And a trick that I like is to come up with a flat brush that is just about the width of the board that I'm trying to paint. That helps me to not go down into the grooves in between the boards. I don't know if that's just superstition on my part or a good way to do it. The next thing we're gonna do is take our deepest color of brown, darkest color of brown, I should say, and we're going to mix that with water, maybe 50-50. I think I can use more water. 
So now that we have that all mixed up, now we're gonna take and put our brown on. See how thin this is? That's the trick for this first coat of brown. You want it to go on thin enough that the black undercoat still comes through. Uh, this is a little trick that will make your wood appear more varied in color, and it takes a lot less effort than having to meticulously go in and cover every bit of the piece with 100% coverage paint. Another trick is always when you're painting planks like this, go with the grain for this first step. It'll be different in later steps, but for this first step, you wanna go with the grain. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of this color on this piece, and then we'll pick up with the dry brushing. So the next step after we have our base coat of brown on is going to be with the Milk Chocolate here by Americana. Again, you just are going up one shade of brown brighter than you did with this. But this technique, I'm not actually sure what the actual technical name for it is, but the term that I use is overbrushing. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull out our palette. We're gonna get a little bit of paint onto it. We're going to get a little bit of water next to it. Now we're not gonna mix that into the paint. We're just gonna keep it separate. The first thing we're gonna do is wet our brush. So for me, what a wet brush does is it allows the paint to flow off of the bristles of the brush easier. That makes this next job just one touch more efficient, at least for me. So now what I'm gonna do is take and get a little bit of just straight paint onto my brush, take a decent amount of it off onto a paper towel, and then I'm gonna go against the grain of my wood like this. And what it's gonna do is just catch all of the wood grain. If you went this way, it would go down into the recesses and that's not what we want. We want the dark brown to be down in the recesses, but this color is just gonna be on top. So when your brush kind of runs out of paint, you go back and get a little more and just lightly go across the top here like this. And then to make sure that each board looks unique and individual, I do this on each board. So I'm not going to go all the way across a couple of boards. I'll just go one board at a time and I'm gonna do that over all of my wood texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out on the rest of the piece and we'll look at that when that's done. There's just one little tip that I forgot to mention before actually, that sometimes the paint stops flowing off of your brush as nicely. What that means is that your brush isn't damp. So what you do when that happens is you go back in, re-wet your brush, go back to your paint, and then now with no issue, the paint should just barely set off of your brush and right onto your train. Definitely makes it easier. Don't wanna work any harder than you have to. So now that we have the milk chocolate done on there, we are going to switch to the territorial beige, which is going to be our brightest highlight. Now the trick is each time we add paint in a brighter and brighter and brighter layer, we're adding less paint to the model. So for example, when we started with just our brown from Craftsmart, we covered basically the entire model with a watered down paint. Then we did a little bit with the milk chocolate and now we're gonna do even less with the territorial beige. Let's jump into it, see how it works. So we're gonna wet our brush, grab a little bit of the territorial beige, and then we are going to start And you can see I'm being really, really light-handed here. Just how much brighter this is to this is that amount that this looks like a really realistic wood grain texture, and this just doesn't look quite as jumpy, but it also doesn't look overdone, like you went up to some crazy, unnecessarily bright highlight. Uh, I'm gonna keep with this across here so you can see it. All right, and there we have it. Just for comparison, you can see that this side is brighter than this side. And I will say my lights are coming in from this side also. You can see just that little bit of brightness really brings out that wood grain, even on the shadowed side. So moving on, I'm gonna knock the rest of this out and uh, then we'll see how it looks. So in between talking about all the different textures that we're gonna be doing on this thing, I figured I'd give you like maybe a tip that applies to all of them maybe. So this tip 
is think about where you place your highlights. You are just unfortunately stuck with like using the wood as an example. The dark brown, you've got to basically cover everything. Each highlight you go up after that can be less and less, but that should help inform how much you place on there. So for example, I'm going to cover all of the wood on this piece in that dark brown, but then when I go to my next highlight, maybe up underneath these kind of overhangs, maybe I don't paint with the next highlight up and certainly not with my brightest highlight. And then by the time I get up to my brightest highlight, maybe I'm not gonna hit the sides of like posts or something. I'm just gonna hit the areas where the sun is going to hit it. For me, that saves me a little bit of time, lets me be a little extra lazy. And it seems like you're doing hoity-toity art stuff because you are not putting highlights where shadows and stuff would be. For me, it's just saving time. Let's move on. Now we're gonna start talking about painting the stucco. Okay, so when we're painting the stucco, we are going to start with the same kind of three color process. And the three colors that we're gonna be using are a coffee latte from Folk Art, a khaki from Apple Barrel, and an antique white from Apple Barrel. With all of these paints that I'm using, whether it be for wood or stone or brick or whatever, just getting approximate colors is really what matters. I change these in and out. I could easily use a bunch of different companies' version of this khaki or a bunch of different companies' version of this antique white. It really doesn't matter the specific color as long as it's close. We're gonna be layering these on exactly the same way we did the wood, just on the stucco. So let's get to that. So to start, we're going to be taking the coffee latte. We're gonna be putting it onto our palette. We're going to 50-50 split it with water. So now with our darkest color, we're going to go in and we're going to start to paint out stucco. going to finish up this last little bit here and then I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of the piece and we'll get it all coated up to look like this. Okay, so next we're gonna be going to an apple barrel khaki and we're gonna be doing that same overbrushing that we did with the wood. We're gonna drop a little bit of this onto our palette. We're gonna do a little bit of water, pull out our paper towels. So now we're gonna take and wet our brush, get a little bit of paint onto our brush. And now we're gonna go in and just very gently over the top, start pulling our brush to get the highest areas of the stucco highlight with this khaki color. With that done here on this little piece in the front, I'm now gonna go ahead and finish that up on the rest of it, and I'll show you what that looks like when that's done. So our last step for the stucco is gonna be using this antique white by Apple Barrel, and we're going to go over the surface just getting the highest highlights. We're gonna get our antique white on the brush here, and then all we're gonna do is just try to hit just the highest spots. So now that we got that done, we're gonna knock it out on the rest of the piece. We'll see what it looks like when it's finished. My next tip might be the best tip for how to be lazy when you're painting terrain or anything like this. And that answer is be smart about the order you put your colors onto your model. Now that sounds like that's gonna get heady and really crazy, but for me, what I found is do your best to go darkest colors to brightest colors in all aspects. So for example, I did the timbers before I painted the stucco. And the reason for that is, is it saves me time in the long run because if I paint my timbers first and I get brown in the area where the stucco goes, when I start putting the lighter colored stucco paint over top of it, it just blends down into the stucco. And then as the stucco brightens up, you notice it less and less, which makes it easier to fix mistakes. So the less times my paintbrush has to touch my model, the happier I'm gonna be. Going from darkest colors on the model first to lightest colors later saves me a bunch of time, makes it a little bit lazier. Let's move on to start talking about some brick. 
So when it comes to painting brick, everything gets a little bit more complicated. I'm not able to quite go with my three color palette anymore. And the reason for that is, is that brick is just so varied. So I found for me to be able to get my brick to read as brick, you have to go with a lot more color variation and then applied in uh, specific places, but we'll get to that. So the first thing we're gonna do is go with a thin down all over coat of wine. Next, we're gonna to go to an overbrushing all over with the cherry red from Americana. Then next, over some bricks, we're gonna be taking and doing some orange spice. And the same thing with this warm beige from Americana. So, that's the color palette. Let's start painting these bricks. So we're gonna start with this Craft Smart wine, and then we are going to water it down. Mix that up. Now, we're gonna go all over our brick, trying to get a light, even color. Remember, for this base coat, you always want to let a little bit of the black show through. This is the general idea. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of the chimney, and then I'll come back to you when that's done. So as soon as we finish up with the wine, we are going to move on to this Cherry Red by Americana. We're gonna take a kind of medium-sized flat brush, and then what we're going to do is get a little bit of water. We're gonna make sure that our brush is not saturated with water, but definitely wet. And we're gonna take this, and we're going to start over brushing. And the key here is to just keep the brush as flat against the bricks as possible. And this is gonna just start letting paint kind of fall off of the bristles and start bringing the redness up a little bit. Another important thing to remember when you're doing this is the paint will all dry darker than you're expecting. So if you first put this red on and you immediately start freaking out going, oh my goodness, it's like way too red. Just remember it will dry darker than you're expecting it to. So now that I've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up on the rest of the piece and then I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see, the cherry red dried a lot darker than it went on, which is great. And honestly, if we're talking about the lazy crafters way to do this, maybe you just stop with the brickwork right here. You certainly could do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to now do two colors. One is gonna be this orange spice from Craftsmart, and the other is gonna be a warm beige from Americana. And then what I'm gonna now do is go in with a thinner brush, and I'm gonna just start individually picking bricks out and starting to kind of get a little bit of color variation. So it's not just dark brick and red brick, but now there's gonna be a little tinge of orange brick and a little tinge of beige brick. Now we're gonna take a little bit of this beige and we're gonna start going in and just lightly starting to grab bricks until our brush runs out of paint. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. It's just finding something that looks like it needs a little bit of color. So now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and still use a dirty brush that I've got a little bit of that beige on, but I'm gonna do that same exact thing but now I'm gonna do it with an orange. The dirty brush just allows for a little bit of extra color variation, and the more color variation you can get with less effort is how you're gonna end up with the best looking paint uh, scheme, plan, paint look with less effort. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of the piece and we'll see what that looks like. My little trick in between these two is going to be talking about the color choices you use when it comes to painting brick. Brick is one of those things that could be just a big variety of colors. So don't be afraid to experiment to find which color you like for your brick best. In this particular model, I knew I was gonna have creams and browns, so specifically I wanted to go with a red brick because I wanted that brick to stand out compared to the rest of the model, right? It could easily be if it's a different type of building, you could go with a tan-based colorway, you could go with a more gray-based colorway. There's just so many options of what you can do. Feel free to experiment with these colors, and that goes even deeper where I used a kind of pink beige and an orange. You could use, you know, a more saturated red. You could do another layer of the uh, cherry red by Americana that would really make it a bright red brick, not to mention the thousands of different ways that you could do mud that would go in between the bricks if you really wanted to take it up that next level. Experiment with bricks, play with them, all kinds of things you can do. Moving on to the stonework. 
So when it comes to stonework, long-term viewers of the channel will know this paint scheme very, very well. It's because I use it on basically all of my stonework and it is the easiest way to get the best looking stone result that I've found. So balancing that, I wanna be lazy and not spend a whole bunch of time on my painting, but also I want it to look good. And so what that's going to be is taking and going over the entire piece with a charcoal gray by Americana. Then we're gonna be doing an overbrushing of pewter gray by Apple Barrel. Then we're gonna do a mixture of granite gray and pewter gray both by Apple Barrel uh, and then that's going to be our dry brush over the top of the stone. Very simple but like I said it's what works best for me. Uh, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start out by getting our charcoal gray, dropping that into our palette here and then we're just going to take a touch of water and drop that down in. We're going to mix that up. So this is going to be really simple. We're just going to take this watered down charcoal gray and it's going to go over everything. All right, so now we're gonna make sure that we grab up all the other stonework on this thing. Uh, we got a porch over here that we gotta do. And once that's all done, we'll move on to the next step. The next move for painting stone is gonna be taking this pewter gray by Apple Barrel. We're gonna put that onto our palette. We're also gonna get a little bit of water next to it on the palette, not mixed with it. We're going to wet our brush and we're going to overbrush over top of this. This is gonna start pulling out the edge highlights of our stone and bringing it up to more of a gray color instead of a dark brown gray. Again, just like the brick, the stonework can have all kinds of variation in it. So it's one of those things where if you want to leave some of them a little darker and some of them a little lighter, that's okay. The final step for stone, at least for me, when I am being lazy, is I'm gonna pull out granite gray from Apple Barrel. I'm gonna throw that into my mixture of pewter gray. And then what I'm going to do is mix that up. I found that the granite gray is just a little bit, just like a touch too blue and a touch too white to get the optimal stone look for me. Of course, that might be different for you, but play with the mixtures that you like. Then we're gonna pull out our dry brushing brush. This is just like a really small one. We're going to take that color, move it onto our paper towel here, get all of the paint off of the brush. And then now we're gonna take and start to dry brush up and there we have a good looking stone. If you want, you can kind of focus on the edges. Going down from the top, that'll create kind of a sunlit look on the edge. Uh, but other than that, for me, there it is. That is how we do stone. So I'm gonna knock out the rest of the piece and as soon as I have that done, we can start wrapping this video up and seeing some glamour shots. There you have it. That is the lazy crafter's guide to painting terrain. I certainly hate my share of painting terrain, but when you end up with a paint job that looks good, it ends up feeling like a good use of your time. And obviously I love building this stuff, so painting it is just part of it. So for me, this is a great result. For you, it might be different, but for me to get to a result like this is all I need. And hopefully that was a useful video for you. If you like this content, definitely leave me a like down below. Leave me a comment of if you would like to see more of this. I mean, I could see this being something that I do more often, something like a lazy crafter's guide to miniature painting, a lazy crafter's guide to, I don't know, a thousand other things. But um, if you would like to see that stuff, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Other than that, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. That goes a long way to helping the channel out and ring the notification bell if you want to know when our videos go live every week which is Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time but as far as this video goes this is the end we'll see you next week have fun crafting